This is the Extended Brain Arc. It's a simple system I created that organizes your studies, work, and life so you can save time and become an academic weapon. About seven months ago, I got to meet the browser company. I used Chrome for 15 years. I never thought I'd leave, but after meeting the team and using the tool and seeing the vision behind what they're building, I was sold. Really, really cool stuff that they're working on. I can't say anything in this video at least, but uh, wow. Crazy. That trip inspired me to create the dream workspace I wish I had as a student. And so in this video, I'm partnering up with Arc and I'm giving away that workspace, which comes with a study skills mini quest for free because I want this to be your year. All I ask is that you check out Arc. It's also free and it might just change your life. I'm gonna do this video in two parts. First, how to set up Arc and the extended brain, and then how to use it. There's a special invite link below in the comments and in the description to get either started on Mac or Windows, and we'll run through the installation together. You are going to have to make an account. I would recommend importing everything from Chrome or Safari if you have it. Choose the apps you use most. I can add Spotify here. You don't really have to worry about this. You can even skip it if you want to. And I'm going to also skip this. You can add a theme to your browser. This is really cool. Let's make it red. We can make it a bit more saturated or not and click next. And sure, I will enable uBlock and also enable Max. And do I want to make Arc my default? Yes, absolutely. Now get started. So the first thing you'll notice on the top left here, those four favorite apps already appear in the favorites area here. But you can actually add as many as you want to. Um, I'll add a few more here, like these ones. All you have to do is just click and drag the tabs and move them into this area up here. I'm a little bit OCD, so I actually kind of just want to have clean, even rows like that, um, and no more than six. So what I love about Arc is that it's more than just a browser. It's an extension of the way that I even use my computer, right? It's like a home dashboard where all the things are completely integrated with the internet. Oftentimes, I actually find myself using the web app version of these apps, like Notion and Spotify and Slack and stuff, more so than the desktop apps because of all the cool features that Arc has that we can use. And don't worry, we're going to cover those in a little bit. But first, we have to address the elephant in the room, which is the sidebar. Now, if your first gut reaction is, I hate this, it's so weird, why is the sidebar on the left? Trust me, that's completely normal. It's called familiarity bias. You're used to seeing it at the top bar and it just irks you to see it on the left side here. But I promise you, just give it a few hours and you'll really start to enjoy how much cleaner and content focused it is with the sidebar on the left side. And in fact, you can actually click this button here to hide the sidebar so it disappears. Like, wow, so much beautiful, right? And if you hover your cursor over the left side of the screen, it'll pop back up and then you can pin it open again. I find that vertical space in browsers is so much more practical than horizontal space. When you go to most websites, there's usually a lot of extra dead space here on the sides that you can just get rid of. And it's kind of what most apps like Notion are doing now anyways, with this extra sidebar here. Or Finder and Explorers and file management do that. So it kind of makes sense for our browser to do the same. And speaking of folders, let's start to set up our spaces. This is similar to how in Chrome you can create different profiles, but with how tedious it is to switch between them, I never really used it. But in Arc, it's way simpler. To make a new space, just click on the plus here at the bottom, click new space, and each space can have its own profile, which means it can have different history, it can have different passwords, logins, extensions, browsing data, and everything. So it really, really creates that separation. Let's call this one a chill. I love this feature. It really helps create separation between work mode, chill mode, stalker mode, or any other type of workspace that you might need. But my favorite thing about spaces is that you can share them. And that's how you're gonna grab my extended brain space for learning and focusing. So in the description, there's a link for my shared space. Once you get access to that, and I click it, you'll see right here that you can get the extended brain. It's from Maddie and it comes with three different folders. All you have to do very simply is click add space to arc and boom, now you have this space automatically installed into your brain. You can actually share spaces with anyone on any browser because arc is nice like that and they don't try to force you into an ecosystem. To stay productive, I find a lot of benefit with having consistency across all of my organization. And that way I don't have to try to organize things a hundred different ways. I always just know that there's a system that I can rely on. I just wanted a simple system. It goes RIP, resources, inbox, projects. And I would duplicate the system for every single space that I made because for all the different things that I do, I might have different projects in different areas of my life. I might have different resources and I have different things that are gonna be kept in my inbox. An inbox is just a place that we store things temporarily so we can get to them later. I don't wanna lose them but I don't wanna to get to them right now. So you can actually just keep extending your workflow by adding that same space multiple times. So I'm just gonna go back and hit add to arc again. 
and do it one more time. And now I've created three different spaces here. And all you have to do is just rename them for the different areas of your life. So maybe this one here, I'm gonna rename this one to study because that's what I'm gonna be doing when I'm studying. Maybe this one here is gonna be for my club org. And this last one, I just want to chill with. And you can change the icon. Let's change the icon for this student one to a book. And now I can just quickly switch between my spaces by clicking on the different icons down here. And I have very clear separation between when I'm doing school stuff, when I'm doing work stuff, or when I'm just chilling. I think our workspaces should enable creativity, right? Like when I genuinely love the tools and stuff that I use, I feel like I do my best work. You can't beat someone who's just having fun and love what they do. So I wanna show you one more way to make this extended brain truly yours. Sometimes we have to use websites and apps that are kind of bland or give us anxiety and it sucks all the fun out of learning. For example, the dreaded Blackboard, right? So on any site, if you go up to the URL area and you click on the site control center, you'll see a paintbrush, go ahead and click that. And then something will pop up called Boost. And you can change the color of the website to something a bit more fun. And you can even change the font to something a little bit more chill that matches your vibe. And if you ever want to get rid of it, go ahead and just click on the circle here. I'll give you one more cool example of using Boosts. And I definitely recommend you do it in YouTube. So the site control center again, click on the paintbrush. And this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click Zap. And with Zap, you can zap away and hide elements that you don't want to see um, on certain websites. So for me, I think shorts are super distracting, especially when I'm working. So I'm just going to go ahead and click and zap on that to get rid of it. Boom, it disappears there like that. I'm going to do the same thing with breaking news. I don't think this is super useful for me. I don't want to see that. I'm going to get rid of that. Um, playables, I don't really know what that is. I'm going to get rid of this as well, get zapped. And with that, our extended brain arc is set up. Now onto the cool part. If you want to become an academic weapon, you need to learn how to wield it. So let's go through how to use this workspace to become dangerously productive, lethal to your work. So it's on its knees, begging you for mercy, but you don't care. You slit its throat anyways, and then you gouge out its eyeballs. Well, sorry, I probably should slow down on the coffee a little bit. So let's start with a speed run through the must know hotkeys. This is going to get you the most bang for your buck. Command T opens a new tab. Command W archives a tab. Command Shift T revives an archive tab. Control tab toggles between open tabs. Command option arrow toggles between spaces. Command shift C copies the current page URL so you can paste it anywhere you want to. Command S toggles the sidebar. There are tons of other hotkeys you can use to really suck out more productivity from Arc. And a pro tip here is if you use Command T again, this is actually more than just a new tab. If you hit tab, you can actually go to the different actions. There's something called edit keyboard shortcuts, and you can actually view all of the different options you have and customize them yourself. So it matches whatever hand configuration or workflows and stuff that you already use. But hotkeys are just the first step to getting the most out of Arc. And so let me walk you through how I would use the extended brain to learn something and then stay organized at the end of it so I'm ready to keep going tomorrow. So let's say that you're doing some research for class and you want to cross-reference this information here with AI. This is pretty much something that I always do now to speed up the learning process. Normally on Mac, you'd have to open up another window or something and then you have to like move it side by side like this because Apple stuff sucks at letting you move things left to right. And you have to kind of finagle with this to, to make it right. I think it's so freaking annoying how Apple makes it very difficult for this to work. Well, Arc had this genius idea of building in a native split view. All I have to do is create a new tab for ChatGPT or something, and then click and drag the tab either into the browser itself or onto the tab that I want to split screen it with. And boom, just like that, we have a very clean, easy split view. And I can easily adjust it using the slider in the middle or using this box at the top here to see my split view options. I can add another split view to make it a three panel split view or even four or even five. I think it gets kind of hard unless you have like an ultra wide monitor or something to use that. And it gets even better because instead of having to set this up every time, I can actually just move this split screen into my resources or something into this pinned tabs area. And I can also rename it if I wanted to. So this is GPT plus research or something. And I can even give it a different icon so that I can remember it by. Let's choose a robot for GPT. And now if I ever 
want to come back to it, saved in my resources. And that's actually a pretty good one. I actually like having this. And now with Arc Search, the iOS and iPad OS companion apps, this three folder system here, the projects, resources, and inbox is actually synced across all of my devices and makes accessibility for my brain even faster. It might not seem like much, but trust me, those little productivity things add up really quick. For example, really useful when I'm away from my desk. Maybe I need to quickly pull up project documents or resources and stuff. I don't have to go digging through hundreds of apps, messages, search, or logins. I know I can always find it using this three folder system and I can add to it from any device and seamlessly sync it across my workflow. All of this so far is how I use this extended brain system for organization. But now let's get into the really interesting stuff and probably what you've been waiting for, which is how I use this system to navigate the internet. So first things first is search, because why do we use the internet? Well, we want to look up stuff, right? We want to find stuff. We want to share things. And for me, I want that experience to be as frictionless and simple as possible. So with Arc, there are actually a few ways to find exactly what you're looking for on the internet in the exact way that you want it. So for example, sometimes I'm not searching for a specific article or a specific page or a specific website. I just want an answer. So what I'm going to do is use command T to open up my search. I'm going to type in GPT. T. And you'll see here, if I hit tab again, I can just directly ask a query to ChatGPT without even having to go to GPT itself. Um, what is ALS? And it'll automatically give me a search query with exactly what I'm looking for. But as we all know, ChatGPT isn't perfect. It can make mistakes. Or maybe I do want to go deeper with my search, but I still want to avoid the problem of having to sift through a whole bunch of different search results and find the best ones. I'm lazy. I just want the internet to bring it to me, you know? I'm gonna hit Command T again, and I'm just gonna ask Arc this time, create a folder with the best resources to treat high blood pressure in children. And this time I'm going to hold shift and hit enter. And what it's going to do for me is search for the web and then compile in a folder for me three of the best articles that I just asked it for. So I don't have to do any searching. It just comes to me right here in my sidebar in a nice folder. I'm going to go ahead and drop that into my inbox so I can look at it later. And I know what you're thinking you're probably skeptical. How do I know these are the best three resources or not? Trust me, I'm also a man of science. So let's actually just do a Google search as well. How do you treat high blood pressure in children? Sometimes we do need to get our hands dirty and do our own research, but ARC can still help us out here because on a Google search, if you hover your cursor over any link, ARC will actually automatically summarize for you what that page is about. So you can get a quick summary of what you're about to get into so you don't waste your time and overcommit to something that's not very useful. All right, so let's say that I do want to commit to reading this article here on high blood pressure in children and adolescents. And as I expected, it is really long and it looks really boring. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use command F. And instead of just trying to find a particular word or phrase, I'm actually just going to have a conversation with AI to summarize this page for you. So summarize the main ideas and findings from this article. Give me in bullet points. And I'm going to hit ask. And Arc is going to read for me really quickly. It didn't read the whole thing because it was too long. Um, but it's going to give me the main bullet points from this paper here. I don't know why other apps haven't also adopted this yet. And I'm pretty sure they're going to follow suit once they see this. But usually when we use command F to find something on a page, I don't really care about that word I'm looking for. I want to understand. I want to understand the context around it. I understand why that is. And that's what using Arc like this allows me to do. It goes deeper than just finding a phrase. And you can actually ask follow up questions to your query um, to continue clarifying. And this can be a really useful way to get through like, you know, dense research papers, articles, right? How does this compare to adult treatment? This article does not compare the treatment of hypertension in children and adults. Okay, so the limitations here is that using this find here, it can't search other sites and access the rest of the internet. It can only see what's on this page, but it will infer key differences based on the information provided. It makes researching and finding information on the internet, which usually is so, you know, boring, monotonous, and high friction, way easier, streamlined, and actually kind of fun. As many of you know, I run a learning skills program called StudyQuest, where we help learners build systems to learn faster, be more productive, and unlock their potential. 
And according to research, one of the best ways to learn is to be able to express our ideas visually in a way that's not restricted by formatting our text and stuff. And there's a feature in Arc that I've been using kind of a lot recently called easels. So to make a new easel, I'm going to click the plus here. I'm going to click new easel. And the easel is exactly what I just said. We can put text anywhere we want to. Um, there's a little toolbar at the bottom here. You can add images that come from you know, your computer, or you can actually just copy and paste images from across the web if you um, wanted a split screen or something like this. And just you can copy images over like this and paste them into your easel. If you want to draw a little diagram, you can hand draw things. If you want to, you can use arrows to connect things around. You can create boxes behind stuff that are colored. You can paste links in here as well. And if you just click on the link in the easel, it'll go back to that page as well. I've really been using easels to create mood boards, to sketch notes, to brainstorm ideas, draw diagrams, tree notes, mind maps. And the best part is that you can share these easels by clicking on this little person icon here with anyone to view or even collaborate on with your group. So if you have group projects to work on, if you want to create little study guides together, um, this feature can easily make you uh, the favorite person in the group. So let's say that I've just finished all my work for the day, feeling kind of tired, and I don't want to lose all the work I've done. And that's what this inbox folder is for. An inbox, like I said, is just a place to store things that we don't want to forget. And there's this line here you'll see in Arc. Anything below here, will be automatically be archived um, after a certain time period. But everything that you move above the line will be saved so you can always revisit it later. So anything that I want to keep, I'm just going to go ahead and move it up into this inbox area um, so that I don't lose that stuff. And if you wanted to, you can actually share your folder with your friends because you're nice like that. And anyone who gets that folder is going to get all the links, all of the easels, all the stuff that you've put in there, and then pick up where you left off. This is a great way to share resources, to share project information, to you know work on projects together, group work, and you can quickly become everyone's best friend. The one thing to keep in mind is that if you do share this folder, people won't receive updates. So you can have to reshare it again if you add more links or you change things around in that folder. And that, my friends, is how I would use my extended brain in Arc to abuse this thing called the internet to become an academic weapon. I didn't even touch on half of the cool features that Arc has, and I'm sure they have a lot more planned for the future. As I mentioned, if you want to grab this extended brain space along with the mini quest to improve your study skills, I'll leave a link in the description. It's completely free. Seriously, I just want to help you guys destroy this year without stress. No one ever did that for me, so I want to at least do my part and pay it forward to all of you guys. That way you can have more time for side hustles, projects, and then maybe we can work together on those things in the future. If you want to extend your brain even further, then I actually created a completely done for you system to plan a study schedule. And I go over all the details in that workflow in this video over here.